Hi, my name is Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to tackle a cedar burl. This is a burl that uh, is a commission piece that a fellow wants me to do for him. It, uh, it's fairly symmetrical. I uh, just have to watch out for a little bit of a dip there so I can make sure it's solid on the inside. It's got quite a big wing on this side. I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to leave. I'll certainly leave some of it because it looks interesting. And the inside looks fairly solid. There's a little bit of figure in there. So it should turn out pretty good. Let's see what we get. First thing I'm going to do is to find the center. I'm using this really large compass I uh, just purchased from Wood Turning Wonders. There's a bit of a dip on the inside or bottom surface of this burl, so I just need to make sure that when I do the bowl part, find the center of it, that I'm going to miss that because I want this to be totally solid on the inside. I don't want a hole to go through the burl. Here I'm just marking the, uh, the turn radius and how much of the wing I might be able to keep. My, uh, my lathe can turn about 12 and a half inch radius or 25 inch diameter so I do have to cut a little bit of this wing off in order for it to swing around. And the wing is sticking out a bit too far anyway. It just doesn't look proportional. So this isn't too bad like this. I could use a faceplate here, but uh, I'm going to use this uh, spur drive that, uh, that just mounts into my Stronghold chuck. The spur drive will allow me to move the burl a little bit and just make sure it's centered up the way I want it so that the top surface is relatively flat and then I'm getting the most bowl I can out of the bottom of this. Here you can see it just barely clears the ways of the bed. I'm going to do all of my roughing out with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. It's a pretty good tool for, uh, for getting your shape. Now what I found with this burl that I hadn't realized when I first started is that it's quite wet. Yeah, I thought this was completely dry and I could do it from start to finish. That's why this is going to be a two-part video because I'm going to have to rough turn it and then, uh, and then let it dry. Wow, these are some really beautiful wet shavings. It's just so nice to see these fly off the piece as you're turning. Mind you, with the bark on this piece, it does dull the tool pretty quickly, even though this is wet wood. Bark always has a tendency to do that, I find.
Here I've just slowed down the video speed just so you can get a better view of the shavings coming off. To refine the, the tenon, I really like to use a, just a small spindle gouge. This is just a 3 8 spindle gouge. And I find it gives me a nice crisp corner and no tear out. So I like to do this versus uh, scraping the tenon. I'm starting and stopping the piece quite a bit just to make sure I get the shape I'm after and to take the most advantage of getting the maximum size and working that little tight area there under the large wing. Here I'm cutting in the wrong direction just to establish the shape and get the profile I want. I don't get the best surface finish in this direction though, so my final cuts will always be in the other direction. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and uh, if you want to see more of my videos, just subscribe to my channel. The piece is so wet, my face shield is just full of droplets of water. Yeah, I really didn't realize how wet this was. I've had to clean the face shield off a few times. I'm doing some push cuts and sometimes I'm doing some pull cuts just to get the shape I'm after.
with the bottom of the piece completely roughed out now, I will uh, turn it around and uh, then just grab it in the chuck and work on the inside. Normally I probably would have just turned the inside of this right out, particularly if, it's, if this was a really hard burl. But because it's a softer burl and the wood is wet, I'm just going to take a few cores out of here just to simplify the removing of the internal wood. This very first core is quite punky. I probably won't really be able to use it because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite punky and has cracks in it. The next one though, the next size up, I might be able to actually get a finished bowl out of it. For this next size up, I'm using the Corpro Carbide Cutter Tip and it just produces a much, much cleaner finish uh, than the standard high-speed steel cutters that come with this system. Bear in mind the uh, video sped up quite a bit in, in, this, uh, in this area, so it does take longer than what it looks like to, to take the core out. Now I'm going to shape the inside surface and also make sure I have a, a relatively even wall thickness throughout the whole piece so it will dry evenly. For the drying process, I'm just going to pop these pieces into a paper leaf bag and close it up and uh, leave them there for a while and see how things go. Uh, near the end of a month or so, I'll probably just use a moisture meter on it and see how things are going. Thanks for watching. So that concludes part one of my video. Uh, because the piece is wet, I need to now leave it dry for probably just a month because it's cedar should dry pretty quickly. But I, what I will probably do at the end of that month is put it in a box or a garbage can or something and
put a bit of a makeshift uh, kiln together and just heat it up and leave it in there for a good three or four days to make sure it drives all the water out of it. So stay tuned for part two. These are just a few photos of the roughed out piece.